there, uh, welcome to another video. A reminder, as always, that all of the resources I'm referring to are on my Google site. If you are doing this lesson for the first time, there will be some tasks I would like you to complete. And if you were doing this lesson for revision, then there will be some tasks that you might want to repeat for retrieval. So this video is about tabloids versus broadsheets, two different types of newspaper, uh, a product that you might need to deconstruct in the exam. So tabloids versus broadsheets. Let's have a look at a couple, first of all. I'll very quickly talk over them and then you can pause the video and make some notes or perhaps you might want to print these slides and annotate the text directly. So there is a broadsheet and a tabloid side by side. Visually already we can see some differences. There's perhaps two broadsheets versus two tabloids. And again, perhaps pause the video now and make some notes on the differences. Very quickly, in conclusion, a tabloid will be smaller than a standard newspaper, perhaps focuses on less serious content, sometimes referred to as soft news, perhaps celebrities, sports and sensationalist crime stories. There will be a lot of star power, perhaps evident, and perhaps objectification of female body. Then a broadsheet might be a more standard or a full-size newspaper, larger than the tabloid. They have came down in size in recent years. They were quite sizable in the past, but again, they will be larger in nature. Uh, and perhaps may take a look at more serious major news stories, often referred to as hard news. Some further uh, differences to discuss. Tabloid will perhaps have a mix between fact and emotion. There will be shorter sentences and use perhaps bias and emotive language. Stories are mixed together, perhaps often on the same page, uh, certainly for, for the further into the magazine, uh, the uh, tabloid that you get. There will be less complex vocabulary, focus on famous people, star power, celebrity gossip, particularly A-list celebrities, or perhaps Z-list celebrities who have perhaps suffered some sort of controversy. They will focus on their, their private lives and any degree of scandal that might have occurred. And as a result, they will perhaps target a lower working class uh, target audience, perhaps with a lesser degree of education. A broadsheet, on the other hand, will perhaps be much of the opposite of those points. So they will perhaps use more fact than emotion. They will perhaps have evidence and facts and figures to support their stories. Longer sentences, again with statistics, clearer language. Divided into clear sections, perhaps uh, an economy section, a, a political section, perhaps a section on the climate. Okay. Complicated and perhaps more complex technical language in the vocabulary used. Focus on major national and international world events and perhaps then my target a, a more educated upper class target audience. To further de uh, develop the, the use of language in both products, you will have a look at tabloids and see informal language, use of puns, a use of alliteration, when a first letter of multiple words is the same, an exaggeration of a number of issues for effect, slang terms perhaps, colloquial language, often referred to as chatty language, or maybe some regional slang as well. Informal names will be used to refer to certain individuals in the stories, short snappy sentences, heightened language, over the top and exaggerated. Brand names will be used. Adjectives often carry sexual overturns. Uh, there might be innuendo, for example, a combination of innuendo and pun might be used. And a focus on the appearance of the individuals, again, sexualizing perhaps the female body, irrespective of domain, perhaps even uh, politicians, female politicians, perhaps maybe sexualized, uh, similarly to uh, perhaps female royals or female celebrities in fashion or Hollywood. In comparison, the broadsheets language will be more formal. They might use metaphors rather than puns, but puns are still used, perhaps a little bit more subtly. Rhetorical questions will be used, uh, more complex sentence, st uh, sentence structure, separated by lots of commas, semicolons, longer sentence structure in longer columns, Statistics, again, to be used in the sentences to support and further evidence the statements being made. Descriptions of people tend to relate to their positions in society and political comments may be included with a commentary from the journalist. Okay, So there's some differences simply when it comes to language use. There will be some theory we can use. Stuart Hall will always say that media products are mediated, constantly mediated, and that will interpret uh, or that will determine uh, the ideology being used, okay? So different ideology, different reading of a text, different ideology, different decoding of the text. 
Different ideology leads to a different rep reception of the, te of the text, uh, as Stuart Hall referred to re reception theory and the alternate readings theory. Basically, representation, different ways to present something, to represent it differently. That will uh, also depend on an individual or an organization's political orientation, usually falling on the left or the right of politics. Perhaps this may also parallel with leave or remain when it comes to the EU. It also often uh, leads into American politics, again, left and right, uh, Democrat, Republican, or over in England and Britain, we might have Labour and Conservative. And that will just roughly indicate whether or not an organisation uh, and an editor or a publication or a company that funds the newspaper will fall on the left or the right of certain arguments. So then, again, some tasks for you to do to pause the video, deconstruct the products, some questions to think about. How has reality been mediated? What is the difference between the different representations seen, uh, perhaps seen here and then seen in other slides? Uh, which theorists or theories could be relevant and which, ideolo which ideologies are at play? I'll let you pause the video, make some notes and perhaps consider some of those questions. Then we might want to do the same thing, use the same questions and consider how um, the different concepts are being represented. Perhaps the concept of nationality and race and how that is being differently represented from one newspaper to the next. And in respect to race also, are there different ways to represent different races? This is a largely European, largely white country and how the war in that country is being represented differs perhaps to how wars are represented perhaps in different parts of the world. That might be something to consider and look at language and look at the conventions we identified earlier and see where you can identify them in the texts. Some other theory to consider, moral panic, Stu, uh, Stan Cohen. Uh, folk devils are often used in tabloids in particular. Have a look at that one in particular and notice where the, or who the folk devils are. Think about how this fantasy and this hysteria and this delusion is used to represent groups of people that we are meant to be afraid of. And we have to consider how they are affecting us. Again, you might want to pause the video and have a look at how moral panic is being used in these tabloids and these tabloids. And then also, uh, Ryan, uh, uh, Richard Dyer will also talk about stereotypes and how stereotypes are about power. So, for example, if you have a publication, a newspaper, a tabloid, you must be funded by a relatively large, substantially large co uh, company with a large budget who has the power to create and further establish these stereotypes. The individuals the stereotypes are being constructed about don't have their own newspaper. They don't have the power to challenge the stereotype that is being made about them. And that is something to perhaps consider also. Other than that, thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe, uh, and I will see you in the next video. Good luck for the exam. Thank you.